Hi there, I'm Java Jim with First Line Equipment. Hopefully you're having a wonderful day today. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel here. Oh, got a little scratch on my neck right there. Today in front of us, we have the VBM Super Analogic Heat Exchanger Espresso Machine. And some people may say, why a heat exchanger? Why analogic? Well, analogic for VBM means there is a pressure stat inside to change the pressure. There is no electronic temperature control. Now, some people, some customers may, may say, um, I want that temperature control. On the flip side, we do have some customers, old school, uh, that say, you know what? I don't want all the digital electronics. Maybe there's more things to go wrong. I want more mechanical. I can make really good espresso with it and all the power to them because you can make good espresso but you might have to do some trials and tribulations uh, just to get it right especially doing a cooling flush now someone may ask what's a cooling flush well typically on an e61 group head uh, with a heat exchanger the group head tends to overheat so basically you have to do a flush and when you do a flush it's basically you take the porta filter off which should always be nice and hot, but you may see uh, some steam coming out. See that little steam coming out? The machine's been on for about 72 hours without any water running through. So there's gonna be more steam than usual. And as you can see, there's a few ounces of water. You can actually hear a little bit of a difference. You don't hear the steam coming out. Now we're kind of ready to roll. Uh, we're not gonna do it today because the real purpose of this video is on the super line which is their dual boiler uh, lever or digital machine and their electronic digital which you could program how much water goes through uh, the group head uh, there's an electronic version and these three models are plumbable and what does that mean they can be plumbed into the water line and uh, basically when you plumb in one of these three models uh, on our website, if you do a search on commercial installation instructions, um, you will see some of the requirements. And one of the requirements is 35 to 40 PSI on the water line pressure. If it's too low, the rotary vane pump on these machines may sound awkward or different or loud because it's trying to pull in the water that's not there. Uh, on the flip side, you may hear some squeaking noise that's when the water line pressure may be too high, 60, 80 pounds. And it may push water through somewhere where we don't want and cause a lot of leakage. So it's really important to get the water line pressure. Um, the fitting is 3 8 BSPP. Look at that on our website. We have a John Guest adapter as well uh, that can convert that over. But uh, when you're plumbing it in, um, and what's really interesting is, you know, the tank can come out. Now, some people say the tank is small on these machines. Yeah, I agree, tank is a little small, but there's two rules of thumb or two schools of thought. When you have a large tank, the water sits in there a long time, tends to go stale, and sometimes collects dust. And what we like, sometimes when you have a smaller reservoir, is you're refilling it, getting fresh water in there, because the old school, again, old school thought process, 50s and 60s, was getting fresh water through the heat exchange pipe, the thermosiphon loop, through the group head, and that makes better espresso. Again, old school thought. Some of that's gone away with the digital stuff coming about, but uh, you can remove the tank, and um, looks like the light went on there, I believe, but uh, there is no, uh, the tank is empty, there is no, uh, switch or anything to say um, hey I'm going in direct plumb mode now one thing that you do need to do when you're plumbing is on the back of the machine on the let me go here a little bit and let me tilt it back here is the elbow okay and this nut needs to come off the elbow only when you're plumbing it in uh, it's 1.8 BSPP down here, hoses included. Most importantly is the position of the lever. I've complained to VBM many, many times over the last 
I don't know, 12 or 13 years. And maybe they can watch this video, but the one thing to remember is see the lever is on this side. That's when you're in plumbing mode. So when you're facing the machine, the lever should be on this side for plumbing mode. And then the other side is for tank mode. Do not use it in the middle right here, okay? You're not gonna pretty much get any water flow. So plumbing mode to this side and tank mode to this side. All right, so let's put this back here. Here's our uh, hose again back here off the elbow. And you can redirect it to the back of the machine. You can redirect this uh, hose to the sides as well. I like it going to the back. Do not lose this nut. And there's really no place to put it. So get a bag or something, a tray, whatever. Uh, do not lose this brass fitting because if you ever have to sell the machine and VBMs do hold pretty good value overall over the years because they are actually quite dependable. Um, it's actually, I would say, top three uh, for here at First Line as far as dependability. So uh, there is no draining capability uh, on these newer machines. They do have a plastic drip tray. Um, I always say nothing is uh, dishwasher safe, but uh, VBMA says the drip trays are dishwasher safe. And uh, you may see the finish here. I actually turned this upside down. Uh, there is a white film a lot of times. So you'll see the machine come like this and um, customers complain and say, hey, I got this ugly looking white drip tray cover. And I'm like, uh, just peel off the film and like, ah. Oh. But I turn it to the other side. Uh, this side's not always gonna be finished. A lot of things that uh, some customers complain about, a lot of things, uh, or a lot of times uh, from the few customers is, hey, the underside's not finished. Just to let you know, most manufacturers do not finish the side that's not visible. Um, so they typically just finish uh, the outside. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Let me pull this drip tray out. And um, you may be seeing this first line magnet. Uh, this is now a collector's item because we don't have any more. So if you have one, you're lucky. Uh, if you do get one, you're even luckier because right now we don't even have these. These are refrigerator magnets that we came out uh, with several years ago. Uh, just to remind you about firstline.com. Last but not least, there are a couple errors uh, that is happening behind the scenes here. And I'm not gonna tell you what they are. I want you to comment down below, since you got this far, and tell me what you find wrong or incorrect behind me. Once again, this is Java Jim with First Line Equipment. Thank you for watching about the VBM Super Heat Exchange Machine, Analogic, no digital, and going over about the plumbing and the requirements and again, go visit our website, commercial space install, installation instructions or install instructions should still come up and it'll give you the requirements. It'll say commercial machines, but the same requirements typically apply from commercial to home and office. Again, if you have any questions or comments, ask down below. Please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel down there. And please visit the link down below for this machine and learn about it because this is a great, phenomenal new machine by VBM. These just got launched with these stainless steel side panels and the black uh, under panels. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.